we've been brought up that if you have a headache, you take a paracetamol. You've got an infection, you go to the doctor, he writes you a script for antibiotics. We have a pain, you go to the doctor, he gives you a painkiller. That's how everybody believes pain should be dealt with. So I think there's a huge education problem from the patient's point of view. All we've been able to focus on is the medical management of people with long-term conditions. And it's very, very limited. Um, I think it's creating a huge burden of complexity um, in terms of multiple medications and things for, for people. The one GP that does understand, she's very good, but I can't always get her, but I won't go, so I don't go to the other GPs because they don't understand. The evidence does suggest that it's socialising um, our patients into being passive recipients of care almost sort of socialising them into being a relationship of learned helplessness on the healthcare system. So if I go with another pain or something strange going on that I can't work out where my pain's coming from, I have to start at the very beginning and in a 10 minute appointment, you've no hope. when you're diagnosed with something or have a chronic pain condition, you want the magic pill. So somebody telling you, well, yeah, basically you've got an incurable um, illness and by the way, you've got to manage it yourself. People would not take that in the beginning. That isn't what people want to hear. But at the end of the day, that is the way forward. And it is the only way forward is to self-manage your pain. And I don't know how to, that would have to be very cleverly introduced to people, the way you tell people and when you tell people, because everybody's different. I think one of the difficult conversations I have with patients, my patients, is getting them to some sort of acceptance that I don't particularly have a solution, but trying to be very positive that I think that there's a lot to, that we can do to help and that we can help by working through this problem together. And I think that I want to emphasise that is, is that it is very much, um, I see myself, and often a lot of my patients that I have, we have a very strong positive relationship anyway. So we can begin to use that and build on it to try and work through the in, quite intolerable suffering um, that they're experiencing. I was at a meeting, not last week, the week before, where there was two GPs there and they were in the group that I was working in and their attitude was chronic pain. Their definition of people with chronic pain was the golfer who comes along, who's the nuisance patient, who plays 20 rounds of golf a week, who is hurting his knee because he's playing 20 rounds of golf a week. I was shocked because I sat in this group and that's how they deemed chronic pain and I thought, thank goodness you're not my GPs. But I thought, but that's very typical is chronic pains a nuisance? It's easy for me working in a pain clinic who has the, um, the luxury of time with patients to be able to really get a good understanding of that one particular problem. problem. Whereas a GP, they may know this patient over a long period of time, so they have the time in that regard, um, but in individual appointments, they have approximately, I think on average, about seven minutes. And that seven minutes is based around do they have something really serious in terms of life-threatening or not. Um, and then after that, I think that it becomes very difficult for them um, to actually manage pain. Because my, I find, uh, certainly for patients with complex um, long-term pain, um, it, does, it does require that degree of time to be spent with the patient. Partly so the patient can feel, feels that they, they're understood and they're listened to. And I think when they go into GP appointment, and then quickly back out again, they possibly don't feel very, very well listened to. And, that, and, and having spoken to GPs, I don't think for one minute that's, that's because they don't want to. I think it's because they just aren't able to in such a busy clinic. GPs aren't experts in you know, certain fields. They obviously 
have an overall knowledge of medicine. Um, so it's sometimes trying to make them understand when you're in pain, how much pain you're in. And, and like previously, now I'm trying to reduce my painkillers, but previously when I was in a lot of pain years ago and asking for more painkillers, and you want to be able to, you've got no way of proving to them that you're in so much pain. Um, sometimes you can sort of feel, I don't know if this is just a personal thing, but worried that they may be looking at you like you're just after more drugs or more painkillers, um, you know, and you never want you to be in the situation that you're on, that you're relying on drugs just to get through the day. We encourage patients when they go to the GP to be clear about what they want to ask, um, but sometimes they'll go with a list and the list is too long. The GP has to essentially go through the list and, and almost pick out the ones which he potentially thinks may, he or she may, may be the most um, serious ones and that might not match what the, what the serious ones are to the patient um, because he'll look at the list and think which one of these could indicate cancer or something more serious and the patient might think that isn't what I wanted you to look at, the most important one was at the top of the list um, and, and of course then you get that mismatch but it's a seven minute appointment um, so you can understand why um, these sort of attitudes start to generate between misunderstandings between the patient and the professional. There was one time where she asked me where if I was getting pain in my legs. Um, this was about a month before everything sort of was found out and I explained to her, no I'm not getting pain in my legs but I'm starting to feel numb. They're starting to feel really numb um, and her response was that wasn't what I asked you. I have to say I, I was um, involved in a bit of a pilot in Arbroath with a GP practice that was kind enough to let me invade their practice um, and um, try and identify patients that might be at risk of developing chronic pain just through the medications that they were taking. Um, and what I found really quite stark for me, and I hadn't really appreciated it until, work until working with them, was just looking at their computer screen and the, uh, we had half an hour per patient, um, which I thought, well that's not very long because I'm used to a bit longer with my patients. But then I saw the lists of, his, of the other GPs in the practice um, and I was just taken aback by the sheer number they were seeing in a day. Um, and I thought, well, at that point it really made it sense as to why patients feel they don't get very much time and GPs feel like they're, they're rushed um, and they have to prioritise their appointments and they have to prioritise what they talk about in their appointments as well. I think we need to have more training in having these different types of conversations. Um, with our patients. I went to a workshop recently, a group of very experienced GPs um, and we were looking at changing the approach to management of people with diabetes. The doctors found it very very hard to change from their traditional role of being in control. Um, they, and, and they were trying not to be and they, they, they couldn't help um, leaping in at certain times and taking control. There was this meeting that I was at two weeks ago where it was about the GPs in Fife to attend and there was hardly any of the GPs I knew were there. So I think it's like you can take a ho horse to water but how do you make it drink? They need to look at the whole person and try and understand this person, that this person isn't a nuisance, that this person needs as much time as the diabetic or somebody with cancer. I described the pain as much as I could. I was telling her that you know, I wasn't sleeping, I was pacing the rooms, I fell down the stairs at work because my legs had started to go so weak. You know, I'm not really sure how I could have explained it better. You know, we need the same time or understanding. What you want from your doctor is somebody that's actually listening to you. Mm -hmm.